Welcome back to Arise Exchange. As markets have gyrated all week, we've been discussing the unique economic times we live in. While the stock market in the U.S. has generally rallied this year, the economy remains sluggish, and that is a disconnect many are having trouble explaining. And as we've experienced overseas, Europe remains deeply troubled, heading back, in fact, into a recession. Economist Richard Wolff is well known for his opinions that there is a crisis in capitalism. He is now a visiting professor, at, at, um, a professor of economics excuse me, at the New School here in New York. One of his recent books is Capitalism Hits the Fans, The Global Economic Meltdown and What to Do About It. Richard, welcome back to Arise. Thank so, you. Richard has a um, unique perspective that we have not heard of or heard from during this week on this program, and you're going to find out what it is. But I want to just start with the news of the week, which is all of this volatility and what that says to you about the general economic conditions. I think most people who look with an even-handed approach at what's going on understand the extraordinary fragility. We're six years into this crisis that began at the end of 2007. The government programs to reverse it have basically not worked. Even where recovery has happened, it's been for a relatively small part of the economies. Europe is in severe trouble. The Chinese economy is slowing down. The Japanese are trying desperate monetary policies. And in the United States, we're bumbling along. You put all that together, and any piece of negative news sparks the underlying anxiety that is everywhere that we're in a very serious economic downturn and don't seem able to get out of it. What bothers me and a lot of economists on both sides of the political spectrum is it feels like this recovery, if you want to call it that, is really a fabrication. That it is the result of a lot of money simply being pumped in because somebody has turned on the printing presses. Uh, do you agree? Absolutely. I would go so far as to say it's, it's a bumbling economy that's on a kind of life support of endless Federal Reserve monetary creation. The money gets thrown in. It sloshes around. The very people who are supposed to invest it in real economic growth have no intention of doing so because it's too risky. And so they end up speculating in financial instruments. It gives a boost to the stock market and a little bit to housing. But that's nowhere well, enough. I, I think that's what's upsetting to so many people is the government is pouring all this money in and then it's being reinvested into to paper. stop paper and therefore not being spent on growing the economy. You call this a so-called recovery and that you th say that capitalism has stopped working right now. So if so, what do we do next? Well, I think we have to have a long deferred debate. We haven't debated in this country our economic system. You know, we're proud as a nation of debating our education system, our transportation system, our medical system. It's long overdue to debate whether this system is really well, working. Well, and when you, but we do debate it on within a box. Are you saying we need to go outside that box right. and take dramatic actions? Yeah, for example, we can't keep questioning more or less government, more or less. The, we have to ask the question, how do we organize production? Do we continue to want to do it in a very peculiar way with a tiny group of people at the start? Top, top major shareholders, boards of directors who make all the decisions and everybody else, the ma vast majority, live with the results? Or do we make a commitment to democracy in the world of business, let more of us participate in these decisions? So that's not going to happen overnight. Not overnight so, and not even quickly. So exactly. So over the next 12 months or so with this economy, what is possibly going to happen here? Because Europe is serious pain. The U.S. has so far seems to be okay. Well, at, least, know, at least some per se it's okay. You might disagree. Well, a moment of history. The first two years of this crisis, 2007-2009, the Europeans said about the United States what we now say about them. It was much worse here, much better there. It's a false notion. We have a world economy. It, it, the, the trouble will happen here, but then it'll move somewhere else. So before we are too excited, worry. The contagion starts to spread pretty that's quickly. That's right. That's right. Um, you have said also that more regulation will not help. And you're taking it from the perspective that, because people say we need more regulation, and you say that's not going to help, but you're not taking it from a perspective of a conservative point of view. You're taking it from a perspective that it's phony to begin with. That's right. It doesn't work. We, we imposed massive regulation in the aftermath of the Great Depression in the 1930s. It was said in the economics profession, of which I'm a part, that we learned how to prevent these kinds of collapses in the future. We're in the proof right now that that didn't work. Well, it, but isn't this always been the case with capitalism? It is boom and bust. And right. we go through a bust, but we come back out and we have many more years of good times and bad times. Isn't that the trade-off? It's, it's the last sentence. Be very careful. For whom will the growth be? See, we're on a, a cycle now. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what's the trend? Is it an uptrend with a cycle 
or is it a downtrend? So do you want to see the government, therefore, because you say austerity hasn't worked, and I think most of Europe has agreed with you. Uh, do you want to see right now the government spending more money, putting more money into the, into the hands of people? Absolutely. Because the private sector has shown for six years it can't do it. Our president keeps going under the media and saying, I'm going to encourage, I'm going to stimulate, I'm going to provide incentives for the private sector. It hasn't worked. At this point, we have to do what we did in the 1930s with Roosevelt. He gets on the radio and he says, if the private sector can't hire the people, the millions who want to work, the government has to do it. He did it. He provided 12 and a half million jobs. It made the depression a lot less horrible for the mass of people than it would otherwise have been. But he saved capitalism. That's what many people think, and I think there's much to it. The irony is, in the refusal to go in that direction, the people who most like capitalism may be subjecting it to the biggest risk of all. Okay, so short term, as we wrap this up, because like you say, none of this is going to happen quickly, what needs to happen over the next 6 to 12 months with the U.S. Fed and elsewhere? I think the first thing is to face the fact that the existing policy hasn't worked and you have to consider major changes. One of those, just to follow on what we just said, would be a public employment program. Stop the hemorrhage of our society that comes from 20 million people without work. But it's going to be expensive. Absolutely. And the answer to that is not the borrowing, the old Keynesian solution. We shouldn't do it. It's dangerous. And we don't need to. We have had the biggest upward revision of the distribution of income and wealth that we've had in this country's history over the last 40 years. A portion of our population has done stunningly well. So you want to redistribute it? Absolutely. When the end of the war happened in 1946, People in power then said the rich have to do a disproportionate share to overcome the losses of the Depression and the losses of the war. Our income tax was at 91 percent. Our corporate tax was much higher than today. Let's go back just to what we did once before for the same purpose of reconditioning and revitalizing an economy that desperately needs it. Okay, Richard, thank you so much. Uh, words that a lot of people obviously aren't agreeing with, but more and more people are saying. Economist Richard Wolf, thank you for coming today. Thank you for the invitation. Arise Exchange here on Arise.